try that again. Ho, ho, ho. So you just watched the Apple keynote, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, and so on. Very exciting. Everyone was pumped. It was your usual Apple love fest. Now there were a couple of developments during this keynote regarding the release date of the iPhone 10, which looks to be delayed from the iPhone 8. But I think some of that has to do with software, and more specifically, this face unlock feature. I missed this moment, the face unlock demo went wrong. Of course, afterwards on my Twitter, everyone was hitting me up. Blue, did you see the demo? The stock price of Apple, it dropped because the demo failed. It was a, it was a failure. I've been skeptical of the face unlock in general for a while. Apple claims to be going a different route. So let's go ahead, let's see how they're describing their face unlock. And then we'll, then we'll see the failure. Your iPhone is locked until you look at it and it recognizes you. Nothing has ever been simpler, more natural and effortless. Okay, here's my first issue right here. It's like simple and natural and effortless. Here's, I've been talking to the guys here in the studio after watching this keynote. It's actually not all that natural because it often doesn't get the face unlock from this range or this angle. Instead, you're kind of like this. You're blocking your view. It, it, to me, it's not that natural. So they've got way more sensors up here in the section, the only cutout along the bezel of the iPhone 10, including an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, a front camera, and a dot projector. Now, they're saying this flood illuminator allows for this function to work even in the dark, projecting light onto your face, illuminating it enough so so the recognition can take place. It projects the dots onto the face and then the infrared camera picks those dots up. A software analysis using neural networks to detect if that's the face that was originally registered. It's being measured in a three-dimensional sense and cannot be fooled by a picture or something like this. This information will not be transmitted to the cloud. Instead, apparently, everything will happen locally in your device. In our phones is an A11 Bionic chip with a built-in neural engine to process face recognition. Okay, so this is where that bionic term comes from with the A11 chip. This neural processing, this neural network they're talking about is embedded into your device. They claim touch ID is one in 50,000. The face ID is one in a million because of these various dots that are being projected onto an individual's face. He does say that if you have an evil identical twin that they might be able to get in or probably could get in. I don't, I don't know how identical identical twins are. After saying all that, he invites the next guy onto the stage, Craig right. Federighi, and he proceeds to hey, attempt everybody. this unlock that has just been talked about. Now, this is probably not a finished product. There's all kinds of fails that happen during presentations for various reasons. But in this particular case, I was already skeptical. Apple, they're not famous for fails on stage, but of course the internet reacted, the stock market reacted. So let's check out this moment. So let's take a look. Now, unlocking it is as easy as looking at it and swiping up. And, you know, let's try that again. Ho, ho, ho. Let's uh, go to back up here and get right in. Okay, so there's this two-stage system where you look at the device and then you also swipe up in order to unlock it. It's not like on the Galaxy S8 where you hold it up and that's it, it unlocks one stage. It has two elements. And what happens on the first device that he holds up here, it doesn't function. He does the swipe portion and it asks him for a passcode. This is going to be the fear of many people adopting this new technology. It might not have been apparent to you immediately, but after the initial face unlock fail, Craig, he reaches up and he kind of wipes his face like this. Now, first I thought it was just some kind of nervous reaction, but I gave it a little more thought and I realized he obviously knows more than we do. He's been involved in the development of this feature in this device. So is it possible that this feature is being broken in some cases by substance on the skin? If it's a little bit oily or maybe there's some sweat on there. Maybe if somebody uses a lotion, who knows? A reflective aspect to having some shine on the skin which might mess up the face ID feature and it seemed like he was aware of it. You might build in the habit of just using the passcode all over again like you have on previous devices. This thing needs to be bang on if it's going to have widespread adoption. 
Ho, ho, ho. I don't think it requires a major overreaction, and I definitely don't think that the product is a failure because of it, but you know that it's not ideal for Apple. They would have loved for that first demonstration to go the way that they expected, which was to unlock the device immediately. Ho, ho, ho. But judging from the feedback I've gotten, a number of tweets, comments, people talking in the live stream about it, it's obviously important to people, so I felt the need to just do a quick breakdown to show you that Face ID fail, and you can make of it what you will. Let me know down in the comments, will this stop you from investing in the iPhone 10? Are you a little bit nervous about this face system? Are you okay with going back to a traditional passcode, or is Touch ID just too important to you or a fingerprint unlock in general. Thanks for watching guys and if you're interested in more iPhone 8 or iPhone 10 content I will have those devices here on the channel as soon as possible so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of that.